All right, greetings, everyone. Uh, the purpose of this video is to look at using Excel to do calculations. And specifically here, we're gonna look at using Excel to do calculations with the logistic formula or the logistic growth formula. Um, but the principles of what we do here could be used in general. So let's take a look at this problem. So we're told um, on an island that can support a population of 3000 lizards. Uh, there's currently a population of 1,200, and these lizards have a lot of offspring and not a lot of natural predators, so they have a very high growth rate, which is around 150%. And we're asked to find P1, P2, and P3, but actually we're going to find all the way to P10. Now, looking at this problem, I know this is logistic growth because it tells me that the island can only support a certain number of lizards, which means there's a carrying capacity. So that tells me that this is logistic growth. And so because of that, I know that I need to use this formula here, the P sub N equals P sub N minus one plus R times one minus P sub N minus one over K times P sub N minus one. From the information we given, we know that P sub zero, the starting value is 1200. The rate is going to be 1.5 since it's growing at 150%. And K will be the carrying capacity, which is 3,000. And if I use that information and plug it into the formula just to find P1, which is the population after one year, the setup for that is going to look like P sub 0, because we're using the value before. That's what the P sub n minus 1 means, plus uh, 1.5, since that's the value for R, times 1 minus, again, P sub 0, since that's the previous value, the P sub n minus 1 over 3,000, because that's our value for K, times, again, the previous value, which is the P sub zero. And if we wanted to calculate this out, we could just go through and plug in the 1,200 for the P sub zero and do that, right? But I'm going to want to use Excel to do this. So I'm going to go ahead and switch to Excel here. And if you've never used Excel, a couple of things about this. Um, number one, notice that there's these boxes here in the way that Excel is broken down. These are called cells. And each cell is referenced based on the column and the row that it is in. So notice that this one that I have highlighted right now, it's in column B, row two. So this would be cell B2. Uh, if I scroll over here, this, is, this one where it says year two is in column A, uh, row four, so that's A4. And I can type things into the into the um, cells. So like here, I'm going to put year one. Notice I've already plugged in. Whoops, I wanted to do year one. There we go. Um, I've already put starting value, population of lizards, and the different years we're going to calculate. The other great thing about Excel is it can do some basic calculations for us. So like if I say equals and I wanted to add two numbers, I can type in two plus three. It'll do that. Now notice I had to put the equals. If I just do two plus three, it won't calculate that. So if I do equals two plus three, I can do a uh, calculation. Um, I can also do some multiplication. So I can do three times eight. I can do division. I can do whatever I want. Another great thing about Excel with calculations is that I can reference other cells in my calculation. So say, I wanted to take the value here from C3, whatever that is, and multiply it by seven. Well, I can either type in the cell equals, whoops, C2 times three, or what did I say, seven, sorry. Okay, so now it's gonna take the value that is there. And sorry, I put in C2, I meant C3. There we go, multiply it by seven. Or what I can do when I'm typing into that um, cell, I can do equals, I can click on the cell I want, so this one, times seven, and it gives me, again, that answer. The other cool thing about it is now if I go and change that number, so let's say I want this to be four instead, as soon as I press enter, notice that it changes the calculation down there because the value in that uh, cell has changed. Okay, so, so those are some of the tricks of Excel. And we're gonna use those to figure out how this population of lizards is changing over time. 
So what I'm going to do first is in this first row, since I've labeled that as the starting value, I'm going to put with the starting value that was there, which was 1,200. Okay. And then I'm going to calculate the amount of lizards after one year using the logistic formula. Remember that P0 plus 1.5 times 1 minus P0 over 3,000 times P0. So I'm going to go ahead and start to, to type that. I'm going to start by saying equals. But now instead of typing P0, I'm going to use the actual value, which is the 1,200. And actually, I'm going to use the cell that that 1,200 is in. So notice that the 1,200 is in the cell B2. So I'm going to start by top, typing B2, or I can just click on it and do B2. So that's the P0. Plus, remember our value for R was 1.5. I can do times, parentheses, the 1 minus, and then remember the next part was again the P0 over 3,000. So I'm going to again going to type in B, B2 divided by, again, the value for K, which is 3,000, and in parentheses, and then to multiply by the P0 again, I have to, again, put the multiplication sign, and then type again the cell where that value is, which is B2, okay? In case you're wondering how I got these time symbols here, okay, on a keyboard, that's um, the star button that appears uh, on the button with eight. So I did shift, held down shift and pressed it, pressed eight. If you're using a mobile device, you should have a star somewhere in your symbols options. And so I do this in, and again, this is very, this is the same thing as the recursive formula for the logistic row. So the B2 is, B, is P0, because that's where I typed the value for P0 plus our value for R, which is 1.5, times, in parentheses, we have the 1 minus our P0 again, which again is in the place of, uh, or is in the cell B2, divided by 3,000, because that's our care capacity, in parentheses, times, and then the B2 again. And by the way, for the division here, notice that I just used the backslash. Okay, I'll go ahead and press Enter, and now notice that it's given me the number of lizards after one year, okay, which is nice. Now we could continue on again. I could do this. We know that P2, the value after year two, would be the value from B1, so the number, or sorry, P1, the number in B3, plus the R times yada, yada, yada. But that gets to be quite a bit to type out. So what we can do instead is make Excel fill the formula down for us. Okay, and it will automatically do all these things. So the way I do that is I highlight the cell that currently has the formula in it. Notice that's all up here. And don't want to do that. Okay, so I'm going to highlight that. And I'm going to drag, if you notice this little box here in the corner, I'm going to drag down. And notice that when I do that, it fills in all the rest of the values. And if we check, for example, the year two, the P2, notice in the formula up here, it says B3, so this value from up here, this 2280 plus the 1.5 times one minus B3 over 3000 times B3, which is pretty great, okay? And notice that also if I were to change the starting value, like if I changed it to 1000, it changes all the rest of the numbers for me, which is pretty great, okay? All right, last thing I will say is that everything I just did also works on Google Sheets. So if you don't have access to Microsoft Excel, Google Sheets works the same way. Okay, that's it for now. Thank you for watching.